We miss his context, we miss his points. So what about training people uh, in the kind of simple and intended how to find that, how to get background and understand that. But that's just the surface. Uh, there's another word in, um, in Judaism called a halakha. And halakha is a, a way of asking questions and understanding the religious laws or the religious rules. And what we're trying to do, even in this area, is help people think beyond just where do I have to go and what do I have to do. Um, I, I thought I had a piece of rope in my bag, but I didn't, but Paul thought she got me. Just imagine this is a piece of rope. It's like we're here and we want to ask Jesus, how do we get here? You know, I've got this problem. I don't understand it. I need an answer and I need to get here as fast as I can. I want to be here tomorrow. Sometimes it's vision. God, what are you doing with me? Where are you calling me? What are you telling me to do? And I want to get here as fast as I can. It's almost like Jesus looks at us and he thinks, okay, you're asking me that question, but I'm realizing actually there's about three things you need to understand first. And, it, and the way I think of this is like a knot, uh, which I can't actually obviously make, but here we go. A knot. So there's like these knots. And we want to get to the end, but actually it's, as soon as we get there, we get stopped. Because there's something more important to Jesus that we understand than we get the answer. It's said that Jesus was asked 300 questions in his ministry and he gave a straight answer to about three. It's also said that Jesus asked about 125 questions in his ministry and um, many of them were in response to a question. So we use Q&A, he used Q&Q. Because what he wanted to do was get us to understand. He doesn't mind, he's not in a race. We are, we want to know the answer tomorrow. He wants us to understand the answer. And there are certain things that God's led me, and I think with Kevin and with Anna, and I'm sure with you, where, where, yeah, we're getting closer to the answer, but he wants us to do it with understanding. Even in this passage, Jesus says to Nicodemus, you're, you're like the chief teacher in Israel, and you don't understand this yet? You read the parable of the sower, the key word there is understand. Those who multiply are those who understand. So even with this level... There's an element where what we've got to realise is that when Peter says, how often do I need to forgive? Jesus is thinking, just by your question, I, don't, I realise you, you're missing the whole point here. You're missing the point here. Listen, you forgive as often because you've been forgiven. It's grace. You know, there's this continuing God moving us on. You know, when Moses comes, when, the, when God speaks to us through Moses, there's an eye for an eye, and we think, well, that's a bit harsh. We have to understand that previous, it was about revenge. You know, so Dean, who does wrestling, okay, um, his, his family and my family have an argument and my family um, pluck out the, have a fight with his brother and pluck out his eye. So Dean, being the Jiu-Jitsu Kung Fu kind of guy, whatever he is, Kung Fu Panda, I don't know what he is, okay, but he, he, attacks, he attacks my uh, family and kills one of my family members. Well, that's, that's vengeance. Moses' law was no justice, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus says, actually, that's great, but if you want to know what's in the heart of God, it's not justice, it's grace. So Peter says, well, how often should I forgive? And Jesus is like, you don't quite get this yet, do you? And that's why he speaks in, not Halakha often, he speaks in what's called Haggadah. Haggadah were the, the um, stories and the parables and the principles and the fables that Jesus told to try and get us to understand the heart of God. Okay, moving on really quickly. I used the wrong pen before. The second level, I'm going to go through, is remez. And remez means hint. And it is the implied meaning. Sometimes we miss his point because we miss his context. Let me give you a couple of examples of this. In fact, I'll just give you one, actually. There's, there's, Jesus probably invoked remez about 50 times that we know of. Um, I'm going to give you my favourite, okay? Jesus is on the cross... And he shouts out these words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, I have problems with this that don't get answered in church, okay? One of my problems is, I get the idea that Jesus is taking on the sin of the world, and I totally believe in that. But I have issues with why he would say that. One of them is this. Did he really think God was forsaking him, exactly as simply as that, when he already knew that in three days he'd be raised from the dead? Um, and probably one of the most important questions I wanted to ask was, why did Jesus say, why? Didn't Jesus understand? 
Jesus, I believe, was invoking Remez. Let me explain how Remez, uh, I'm not going to pick on Dean, because it's, what's your name? Jim. Jim, let's pick on Jim, okay, because he's starting to get angry at me, okay. So, uh, I'm talking, and Jim comes up to me uh, later and says, hey, Paul, just let you know, I couldn't see the screen because your nose is too big, all right? And you're pretty ugly, to be honest. And you made that joke about Kate, but actually, you're pretty ugly. And I say to Jim, hey, Jim, sticks and stones. That's all I say, sticks and stones. Well, the majority, you know exactly what I mean, don't you? I'm basically saying to him, sticks and stones will... But, okay, now we might not believe that, but we get what I'm saying, okay? Now, I work with Germans, okay? There's, you can pray for me later, okay? But I work with a lot of Germans. And if I said that, they don't know that phrase. So if Jim said to me, hey, Paul, you're, you're ugly, you've got a weird nose. And I said, hey, Jim, sticks and stones. Then some of you would get what I was saying. But if you were German, you'd be there going, oh, is he threatening him? Is he going to attack him with sticks and stones? What's he going to do? And they would make up their idea, maybe go and tell other people, this is what Paul thinks you should do if somebody says this to you. Yeah? yeah. But that's not what Remez was. What Remez was this, was that you would quote a portion of something and you invoked the whole thing. So when Jesus is on the cross, he invokes something. He invokes to memory, using one little phrase, a bigger thing. Do you know what it is? Some of you will know what this is. Very, very good. Sam, let's just turn to the Psalm, just to fully understand this really quickly. Just turn to Psalm 22, if you don't mind. 